السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد عرض الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى صدق الله العظيم قال فيزا تنسيد ورميت الله أن يهي شعور الشعور الصحيح لسن أبوان بالبلاوة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم his family, his companions and all those who follow his footsteps in the day of Qiyam. The special brothers and elders in Islam, it is with the hikmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has kept certain things hidden from human intellect. He has kept certain things which a human being cannot see, it is in his own knowledge. For example, nobody knows when he is going to depart from this world to the hereafter. Nobody has seen an angel. Because all these things are related to the unseen. Likewise, the set of brothers and elders in Islam, the merits which, are, which we are given for the rewards we do in this world is also hidden from our sight. None of us know which of our deeds have been accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why each one of us strives daily or when Ramadan comes, we strive hard to do more and more. So that we expect Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the deeds we do. So respect to brothers and elders in Islam, maybe a certain type of deeds will look very minute, very small, but in the eyes of Allah, that could become a means for our salvation from hellfire. Let me quote an example, the riwayat of uh, Sahih al-Muslim, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there was an immoral lady who used to have, uh, who, who used to commit zina. So this particular lady whose life was full of sin and vice, one day she saw a dog which was panting due to severe thirst. The moment she saw this dog, she wanted to quench the thirst of that dog, so she removed the leather sock which she was wearing and she uh, watered the dog in, so that it could quench its thirst. So the moment this happened, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave this lady who used to commit sin in her life. Respected brothers and elders in Islam, when we look at this incident, we will think quenching the thirst of a dog is nothing. We might consider staying awake in tahajjud throughout Ramadan, we say in Qiyamul Layl, it might be merited. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the deed of that lady, which is very minute, it won't even cost a rupee, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted that deed from the lady and forgave her sin. So respect the brothers and elders in Islam, the ayat of the Quran which I recited before you, Allah says on the day of Qiyamah, when people will be coming to the ground of Mahjar in scattered groups, they will be, they don't know what their situation is going to be, so they will be really confused. So when they come there, they, the, the deeds will be shown to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the, the preciseness of his recording. He says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرَ يَرَى The one who does good, the weight is equivalent to an atom weight of good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would also bring that into account. Likewise, the one who does an atom weight of evil, even that would be brought in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respected brothers and elders in Islam, we don't know which of our deeds have been accepted from Allah. We don't know, we are unaware of that. So therefore as a Muslim, it is very important for each one of us to show very, uh, so important to even a very minute deed. For an example, saying a subhanallah, it is not going to take a, a minute or, or an hour. It's not going to take time. It is going to only take a millisecond to say subhanallah. But who knows in the court of Allah that subhanallah would be a cause for our salvation from hellfire. So respect to brothers and elders in Islam, if we don't show that importance to the deed, what would happen is Allah should protect each one of us. We would feel, we would feel that we really are fooled by this world on the day of Qiyamah when we see so many opportunities which have dropped in our life. So I just briefly wanted to highlight a few deeds which we can bring in our life which could become a means of salvation for us 
salvation from hellfire. Number one is respect to brothers and elders in Islam. It is imatul aza and its tariq. It is to remove whatever is causing obstruction to the people, not to cause inconvenience to the people. So we see a hadith in uh, Bukhari where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I saw a man who was enjoying himself in paradise because of one, one deed. And he mentioned the deed. Respect the brothers, the deed which that man, was, my man had done was, he saw a tree which was blocking the way. So he knew that it is causing some hindrance to the people. So he took measures to move that, remove the tree off so that people could comfortably move on. So because of this deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted paradise to that man. When it comes to our times respected brothers, when we come to Salat al-Jum'ah or wherever we go, maybe we want to park our vehicle. At times we come a bit late and we see a, a very small gap, but we see that our vehicle can fit the gap, we just pass the vehicle there. And when we come to the masjid, we sit in the khutbah and we listen to the talk. And once the khutbah is over, we, we are unaware that the vehicle which we have passed is blocking another person's vehicle. We are causing inconvenience to another Muslim brother. So we pray Jum'ah, we pray our Salat, we pray our Nafal, uh, and we pray, we recite Dua and all that. And by the time we reach the car park, we see my car is blocking another Muslim's vehicle. Respect the brothers and elders in Islam, parking our vehicles in such a way that it will not cause hindrance to others, could also be considered amongst this. And also another example of respect of brothers in our time, we see in certain uh, masajid where Jum'ah Salat is conducted, we see some leaflets are distributed outside the masjid. Maybe when Eid al-Fitr or a festival season we see uh, leaflets regarding uh, so many caterers, at times we see so many institutes distributing their uh, leaflets outside the masjid. We cannot put a stop to that. But we who attend the Jum'ah Salat, what we can do is, before we take the leaflets, as Muslims, we should see whether the leaflet which I am going to take is going to benefit me or not. Am I interested in the course or not? If I am not interested, I can say to that brother who is distributing it, Brother, I am not interested with this, you can give it to somebody else. If not, what happens generally is, we take the leaflet with us, the moment we see it is something not relevant to us, we just throw it to the road and we leave, leave off. But the saddest part in respect of brothers, some masajid, not everywhere, we see once the Jummah Salat is over by 2 o'clock, when we visit the same masjid for Salat al Asr, you would see that the masjid, the roads are polluted. So those people who are in charge of cleaning the roads, they would say, when, when Friday comes, the whole road is polluted because of these leaflets and these people are the ones who are caused for it. So what we can do is respect our brothers, before we take a leaflet, if we are really interested, we can proceed, if not, we can give it back to him. And another, that is the first uh, easy deed which we can do. Number two is, respect our brothers and elders in Islam. The riwayat of Tirmidhi, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Is it possible for one of you to do 2,500 revolves every day? The Sahaba were amazed. They thought, how come 2,500 deeds every day? So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives the prescription. He says, this is the way you do it. And he said a very easy amal, maybe most of us are practicing it. Whoever is practicing can keep on practicing with the ihtisab, expecting the reward from Allah. If we don't have it in life, let us bring it into practice from today. Respected brothers, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, after each and every faral namaz, after faral salah, recite subhanallah ten times, alhamdulillah ten times, and Allahu Akbar ten times. So when a person reads this uh, zikr, this ten ten and ten comes to thirty, so once we finish the five salat, we have finished hundred and fifty. So we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us in the Quran that He is going to multiply our deeds by ten. So hundred and fifty into ten equals thousand five hundred. So where do we get the rest balance hundred? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you go to sleep, recite subhanallah 33 times, alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times, that would count 100. So 100 into 10 is equal to 1000, and when you add both, it's equal to 2500. So sahaba were amazed. Such an easy deed which we are missing in our life, it's soon after salah, it won't even take 2 minutes to read the subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar 10 times each. 
How can we miss it? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the reason for that. He said when a person starts to pray, Satan comes in between and he starts to whisper into a person's mind saying, you are in prayer, immediately after your prayer you have got so many things to do, so see that you immediately, once you give salam, leave the masjid and attend to your work. So Satan tricks us, because of that we forget to do the deed, end of the day we have missed out so many good deeds. So when it comes to our sleep, when we go to our bedding, Satan makes us do something which is not really relevant and we feel sleepy and we fall asleep. Satan makes us sleep because of that we miss out that uh, zikr as well. So respected brothers and elders in Islam, if we can adhere to this as well in our lives, inshaAllah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward us with 2,500 rewards. Allahu Akbar. Do you, do you think that we might commit 2,500 sins every day? Allah for the big one, I don't think we would, com- uh, we would commit so many sins. But Allah is merciful. Allah is ready to give us reward in multiple folds. But if we can make a small sacrifice, take two to three minutes of our uh, 24 hours time, and it will be a noor for uh, this world and as well as the hereafter. Number three is respect to brothers and elders in Islam. When it comes to describing and discussing regarding this, we always focus ourselves, our attention is towards the masjid, uh, taking a tasbih, uh, or doing some hajj, or so on. But respect to brothers, this deed, which I am going to uh, mention to you now, is a sort of a deed which is really, at times, is difficult, but it has great reward. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best amongst you is the one who is best to his wife. This is a topic on its own, but I just want to highlight briefly. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of you is the one who is best to his wife, his family. And thereafter he said, I am the best to my family. When, it, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says about himself, he says, I am the best to my family. So when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's akhlaq, his morals, she said, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's morals were exactly what is mentioned in the Quran. So respect to brothers and elders in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created every human being with some weakness. Some weakness. And especially for all of us know that women are created with some weakness compared to men. Because if the weakness doesn't exist in a woman, there is no beauty in her. If a man, if a woman starts thinking like a man, the partners will not match, it will not come right. There will be always problems and turbulence. But respect to brothers and elders in Islam, Whenever we see something dis- which displeases us from our spouses, what we have to do is respect the brothers, we have to see the good part of it. Let me give an example. Let us take a clock which is out of order. A clock which is out of order, which it doesn't work. Maybe the clock stops when it is at 1 o'clock and it doesn't work anymore. But we have to keep in our mind that this clock which is in out of order, it is no longer working, it says the truth twice a day. It says the truth twice a day. So when it is afternoon, when it is 1 p.m., it doesn't indicate it's 1 p.m., but it shows it is 1 p.m. And likewise, if it is 1 a.m., it shows it is 1 a.m. So likewise, respect of brothers, maybe we see 98% of things which displease us. Maybe there is 2% in our spouses which we can appreciate. We can look into that and we can start interacting with them in a very nice manner. And also, one of the very important things which our spouses expect from us is we need to appreciate what they do. Maybe they spend hours and hours and hours cooking something for us. By the time we reach home in the night, we see the dishes uh, put uh, laid in the table. When we go sit there, when we have it, we see that there isn't enough salt. What do we say? We say, don't you know to cook properly? Is this the way you treat your husband? I, I work hard and I come back home and I get this meal. These sorts of comments should not be mentioned. Because even they have to undergo some difficulty to prepare that food for us. If not, respected brothers and elders in Islam, maybe outwardly a couple could live together, but within their hearts they will not have unity. And finally, I would like to conclude with a quote which a Sheikh mentions in his book. A woman can be patient with her husband's poverty, unattractiveness, and his busy time, but she cannot be patient with his rude behavior. Let me repeat, a woman can be patient with her husband's poverty, unattractiveness, and busy time. She's very busy. She cannot be patient with his rude behavior. 
respected brothers and elders in Islam, let us bring a positive change in our life when it comes to our muatara, the way we deal with our uh, people, with, with, when we start dealing with our wives, our children and so on. It's a topic on its own, but I briefly highlighted which could become a means to change ourselves. We ask for Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to do many good deeds as possible and make us among those who will enter Jannah on the day of Qiyamah with the Ambiya, the Shuhada and the Salihin.